Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what I use to record and make gameplay videos and tutorials for those of you who are interested. A lot of this stuff is on my blog in the PC and Gaming FAQ tab which is in the description of most of my videos and it's also linked on my channel in case you would like to refer back to something more quickly than having to watch an entire video. But I did want to make a video just specifically on this topic showing you the software I use, the microphone I use, and then the settings for them. So yeah, I'm going to start off by showing you what I use to record a gameplay. This is Fraps. It's a really great software. It might not work all that well on older systems because it's kind of demanding and when you run it with a very demanding game, like while you're recording, it could get a little laggy. So I suggest trying something like Bandicam. I've seen that work, but Fraps works really well for me, so I just prefer to use this. I have disabled the benchmarking and overlay hotkeys because I always accidentally press them, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. As far as the FPS overlay, I have it in the right hand corner bottom right hand corner because it's out of the way of everything and I just, I don't suggest disabling this, especially if you play in full screen, because it shows you when you're recording. It will be red if you're recording, and if you're not, it'll be yellow like this, so it's very handy. Moving on to the movies tab, this will be different depending on where you want your videos to be saved to. So I have a hard drive dedicated to recording and taking screenshots, so that's where that is. Video capture hotkey, mine is set to F12 because it's really convenient for me to just press F12 and press it again to stop recording because it's right next to all the other keys that I play with. But this is the key that you press when you want to start recording your FPS if you have it enabled to show up on screen, it'll turn red and then you press it again to stop recording and then the FPS will turn yellow. Video capture settings, I believe these are the default settings, 29.97 FPS at full size, loop buffer length 30 seconds, and I do not split movie every four gigabytes because it's just more convenient for me to edit one full length video. So I kind of just like having one 20 minute video that I have to work with or however long I recorded for. Sound capture settings, that's default. Record external input. This shows you what microphone you're using to record your voice, your audio. So right now it says microphone two Yeti stereo microphone. This will be different depending on what you're using. I'm using a blue Yeti, so it says Yeti. Hide mouse cursor in video. I don't have that checked because I like showing you where my mouse is and what I'm clicking on. Lock frame rate while recording. I believe that tries to keep the FPS the same the entire time you're recording. Force lossless RGB capture. I do not have that checked. On to the last tab, the screenshots tab. This again will be different depending on where you want your screenshots to be saved. Screen capture hotkey. So you press this when you want to take a screenshot. I have mine set to F11 because again, it's just more convenient for me. <laughs> Image format. At PNG, those to me are the best ones to work with. I'm just used to working with PNG files along with the other hotkey settings. Just, just, you know, what you prefer. This is what works for me. Screen capture settings, I didn't touch that. So that's Fraps. That's what I use to record. It's very simple to use and I really like it. Now I'm going to show you what I use to record tutorials and what I'm using to record right now. This is Camtasia and I use it to record the desktop and basically anything other than gameplay. I also use this to edit and record audio. The audio with this isn't the best, but it gets the job done. It's easy to use, it looks nice, and I like it. It's sort of an upgraded version of Windows Movie Maker, if you will, but it has a lot more options, and I don't know, I just, I like it. So if you wanna record the screen, you press this button here, and then uh, this little guy pops up. I will insert a picture of what it looks like when you're not recording. So you can change what you want it to record. You can either have it set to full screen, it'll capture every everything in the full screen <laughs> or you can set it to only capture one program so like if I had fraps open it will only record fraps and then black out everything behind it which is very very handy and I do like that idea there's also an option for webcam and then of course uh, your audio your your microphone and you can change your audio levels and then while you're recording it shows you the duration the audio level again which you can change while you're recording so that's cool you can delete what you've captured straight away. Like if you didn't like any of it, you can pause it, um, which will pause it 
and it will stay in the same clip or you can stop and then it will stop recording altogether. It will make one like little Camtasia video project thing and then you could start editing it in Camtasia. So this is a very handy tool. Again, I use it for editing as well and I just like it. <laughs> Moving on to my microphone, I use a Blue Yeti. I'll show you what it looks like next to a water bottle. It's pretty big. I did break the pop filter and I just attached the um, fabric to the top of the microphone, which isn't the best, but but it works for now. I do have to get a new pop filter, uh, but yeah. On the front, you have a mute button and a volume knob in case you want to um, turn up or down the volume that you're hearing through your headphones, like when you're playing a game. So I usually just use one headphone, so that's why I have really cheap headphones. I got them for like a dollar or two on eBay, so. <laughs> in the back, you have two different knobs. The top one is gain. That is the level at which the microphone is receiving the audio, like you talking, and if it's really high then you might pick up some background noise if it's very low you're gonna have to move the microphone closer to you so it can hear you but it'll wash out um, extra background noise the bottom knob is for which part of the microphone you want to receive audio and I have mine set to receive only what's in front of it so that's a very cool setting because it won't pick up stuff that's you know behind the microphone it's just just your audio and what's maybe behind you but yeah, it's a, it's a great microphone. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you found it helpful. I apologize if I talked a bit too fast. I just wanted to get through this as quickly as I can without making this video too, too long. Uh, but knowing me, I like to talk a lot and stuff. So <laughs> there you go. But yeah, again, I hope you found it helpful and I will talk to you all later. Bye everyone.